service manager is giving Mike an extension course on servicing drum brakes. Mike can handle ordinary brake work okay, but he's new on the job, so he wants to learn some of the fine points. Let's listen in. Well, Mike, once in a while you get a brake job that needs more than the usual relining routine. Some of these jobs can be tough to diagnose, but in most cases, by careful checking, you can find the cause of the trouble and correct it. Take brake chatter, for example. This is basically a brake vibration that travels to other parts of the car. It's not dangerous, but the vibration and noise can be irritating. And to make things interesting, chatter can occur at either high or low speed. Chatter is usually caused by brake drum surface irregularities, especially in the front brakes. A drum surface may be wavy, oval, out around, or spotted by overheating. I'll describe the effects of these conditions as we go along. In addition to brake drum condition, high-speed chatter can also be caused or made worse by a loose or bent wheel, poor wheel balance or bearing adjustment, soft tires or irregular tread wear, steering or suspension looseness, or improper adjustment. In general, the best way to begin looking for the cause of brake chatter is with a road test. Ask the owner to ride along and point out the disturbing condition. Try to get all the information you can so you'll be starting on the right track. Oh, hello, Tech. I agree, a road test should be the first step. You'll experience the condition firsthand, and that'll make it easier to decide whether you should concentrate on the brakes or plan on looking elsewhere for the cause. Before you take the car out, make sure the tire pressures are correct and that front wheel nuts are properly torqued. Also, raise the car so you can check for bent wheels, improper bearing adjustment, or irregular tire treads. Steering and suspension parts should be in good condition. To test for chatter, speed the car up above 60 on a smooth stretch of pavement. Then apply moderate brake pedal force, as you would when slowing down for traffic, or when entering a speed zone. If vibration begins as the brakes are first applied, but lets up or disappears at lower speeds, the cause is probably a drum surface which is wavy, oval, or out of round. In some cars, you may also hear a rumbling sound along with the vibration, especially with heavier pedal force. Chatter which comes in at any speed from high to as low as 20 miles an hour is usually caused by heat-spotted drum surfaces. Other causes can be badly worn brake lining or new lining with improper heel and toe clearance. After you check the brakes, bring the car back up to the original test speed and let it coast down through the critical range without applying the brakes. Any vibration under these conditions comes from other parts of the car or from the pavement. Okay, Bill, I'm sold on testing. But I don't understand the effects of those drum conditions. Well, the irregularity can be a slight waviness in the friction surface of the brake drum. This is usually a new drum condition and is not the same as oval or out-of-round distortion. The surface waviness causes uneven friction, which produces the vibration we call chatter. You see, even though new drums are precisely machined, the friction surface can change slightly as the drums break in, especially if the brakes get extra heavy use during this period. Over-tight or unevenly tightened wheel nuts can distort a drum and cause irregularities. So be careful with those impact tools and big wrenches. Sometimes you can cure or reduce brake chatter by retorquing the wheel nuts properly. Also check the wheel mounting stud area for thick paint accumulations or other high spots. The mounting surface of the wheel must be even, or the drum may become distorted when the wheel nuts are tightened. Good points, Tech. It's best to tighten the wheel nuts evenly and in proper star pattern sequence with a torque wrench. First, you snug the nuts to about 30 foot-pounds, and then in the same star pattern sequence, tighten the nuts to 60 foot-pounds. Right. Say, Bill, how does an out-of-round drum cause brake chatter? It's another case of uneven friction, Mike. And right along with the chatter, you'll probably get another condition we call pedal pulsation, which incidentally is an important testing clue. Besides causing uneven friction, an oval out-of-round drum forces the brake shoes to move in and out as they're applied. This action causes hydraulic pressure pulsations, which can be felt at the brake pedal. Now, to wrap up the story on front brake drums, chatter which is caused by overheated areas or hard spots on the drum surface also results from uneven friction. Compared with other areas on the drum surface, friction is different at the hard spots, so you get chatter and noise. Okay, Bill. It all makes sense now. And as a cure, I suppose you machine the drums? Right. 
you'll have to clean up the waviness and make sure the drum surface is truly round. To avoid brake pulling later on, you'd better machine both drums, even if only one actually needs it. Incidentally, you can remove blue heat spots by sanding. But it's better to install a new drum when you find bright cord hard spots because this condition can return after machining. With a new drum, we also reline both brakes and sand the opposite drum surface so braking will be even. Always handle brake drums carefully, on or off the car. They're built to take full braking loads, but you can cause distortion if you bang them around, especially if you drop one. A good point to keep in mind, Mike, and remember that you can minimize distortion if you machine a drum with its wheel attached and properly torqued. Follow the approved tightening sequence and leave the wheel nuts undisturbed after machining and during installation on the car. When you machine a drum with a wheel on, it's a good idea to mark the wheel and the mounting stud. That way you can replace the wheel in the original position later on if it's removed. Thank you, Tech. Now, Mike, if you use a drum lathe, the cutting tool should be sharp and set to cut smooth. We want a uniform surface with a dull finish, so be sure to break up any machining pattern with emery cloth or sandpaper. And regardless of whether you use a cutting tool or a grinding wheel, be careful that you don't overfeed. In a heavy cut, the tool can follow irregularities in the drum surface. With too much grinding feed, the stone only wears faster, and you can overheat the drum. Never enlarge the total drum diameter more than 60 thousandths over the original new drum measurement, or you'll need a new drum. Just remove enough metal to clean up surface irregularities or any out-of-round condition. After machining, be sure to remove all cuttings or abrasive material from the drum, and keep it clean. Oil or grease from hands, wiping cloths, or compressed air can get on the lining and cause brake problems right now. Well, that's your cue to talk about lining, Bill. Well, if chatter is caused by badly worn lining, the cure is obvious. But don't take chances on causing uneven braking by relining only one brake. Reline them in pairs, both fronts or both rears. Before installing the brake shoes, make sure the radius of the new lining is not too large. If there's not enough clearance at the ends of the lining, you could have another case of chatter on your hands. To check lining radius, hold the shoes in the drums with the lining against the drum surface. You should have at least four thousandths of an inch clearance at both ends of the lining, so it'll contact the drum in the middle area first. If you reline the fronts to correct chatter and our 11-inch brakes with non-ribbed drums, you can get better results with the new groove-type primary linings. But don't mix them up. Always install groove linings in axle pairs. Always use groove-type primary linings for replacement in our brakes with ribbed front drums. Plain surface linings will change the brake characteristics and may cause chatter. Bill, you've covered just about everything but steering and suspension. What's the story there? Make sure all steering parts are in good condition and properly adjusted. Wheel alignment and bearing adjustment must be okay. Suspension bushings and ball joints must be in good condition. And the strut bushing nuts must be properly torqued. And don't ever let me see anyone try to cure chatter by fooling around with a suspension design. You're only asking for trouble if you do. If a suspension change would stop chatter vibration, you can be sure they'd do it at the factory. Okay, Tech. Now it's time to talk about premature lining wear. Overheating can also get into the act, and you may find evidence of both conditions. Most of the causes are the same in front and rear, with the exception of parking brake conditions. Premature lining wear can be caused by over-adjustment or improper adjustment, incomplete shoe return, lining contamination, faulty wheel cylinder operation, incorrect lining or improper installation, by driver abuse, such as brake pedal riding. Did I skip any tech? Nope, but we're about to skip out of the groove on this side of the record. You can fill us in on lining wear as soon as someone flips the record. A brake can over or under adjust at the automatic adjuster cable, the cable and this causes the improper adjustment. Just make sure no cable ends are kinked when they're hooked up. If you install a new brake adjuster overload spring, make sure that the hooks face outward. 
use the new type green or blue painted spring. And be careful that you don't bend it out of shape when installing it. Thank you, Tech. Mike, you can also get over adjustment if the drum is badly out of round or off center. You see, as the drum turns, you get back and forth shoe movement, which can work the adjuster when it's not needed. The total out of round indication of any drum should not exceed six thousandths. You may find a rear drum which is slightly distorted and jammed on because the bolt circle and drum pilot or mating drum holes are not concentric. First, try a new drum. But if there's flange pilot interference at one point, even after trying different bolt holes, you may also need a new axle shaft. If a rear brake drum or axle flange has too much run out, the linings can also wear out in a hurry. Over adjustment is no problem here, but a wobbly drum can cause lining drag and wear even when the shoes are fully retracted. Improper brake adjustment is basically a parking brake condition. The main point to understand is that linings can drag and wear if the parking brake adjustment is either too tight or too loose. To do the job right, always remember to adjust the parking brake after the service brakes. To check parking brake adjustment for being too tight, first make sure the brake operating lever is fully released. Then remove both rear brake drums so you can get at the parking brake struts. Now on both brakes, seat the shoes against the anchors if necessary. There should be a slight amount of inplay at the strut in either or both brakes when the cables are fully released. If neither strut shows inplay, the parking brake adjustment is too tight. At the other extreme, if the parking brake adjustment is too loose, a cable return spring can extend far enough to move the strut operating lever and secondary shoe rearward. The spring force causes the lining to drag and wear rapidly. When the drums are off, you'd better check the parking brake strut, lever, and cable in both brakes to make sure there's no sticking or binding that could interfere with the full release of the brake shoes. And be sure to check both cable return springs for signs of heat damage. The spring that's been overheated may not release the cable properly. If there's any doubt, install a new cable and spring assembly. Right, Tech. And on 11-inch brakes, it's best to replace with the improved tight brake cables. They're easy to identify because the spring on the left side assembly is zinc colored and the one on the right is blue. Always install them in pairs. If you mix new and old type cables, you can cause brake drag. Weak or damaged shoe return springs in any brake can also result in brake drag and rapid lining wear. Anytime you find return springs discolored by heat or with distorted end coils, be sure to replace them with new ones. If brake shoe return springs are heat weakened, you'll probably find that the shoe hold-down springs are also affected and should be replaced. Do not stretch hold-down springs, trying to increase their tension. The added spring load can cause extra shoe drag on the support plate and make them hang up. When you reline, or if you suspect that shoes do not return properly, be sure to check the contact areas on the brake support plate and the tabs or loops on the shoes. These areas must be free of burrs or grooves which could hang up the shoes. You can use a fine cut file to clean up any irregularities. When you install new or reliant shoes, always put a thin coat of approved lubricant on the brake support plate platforms. But don't get it on the linings or the job will bounce back into the shop. And while we're on the subject, you'll probably find the shoe contact areas dry in rear brakes if there's a repeated chirp noise when you apply the brake slightly. The chirp results from back and forth movement of the shoes, so remove them and lube the contact areas. And that brings us to lining contamination. Oil, grease, or brake fluid on the lining can make a brake grab or slip. Grabbing also causes brake pull toward the side with the contaminated lining. If it slips, the brake on the opposite side works harder, and causes pulling, and it wears out sooner. In addition to careless handling, lining contamination can also result from leakage at axle shaft seals, front wheel bearing seals, or leaky wheel cylinders. The lining, of course, must be replaced when other repairs are made. If you mix different types of front wheel bearing lube, the mixture can become runny and leak out out of the lining. So play it safe. Wash out all the old lube and don't overdo it when you repack the bearings. Be sure to install new seals when you remove the bearings for any reason. I'll remember, Tech. Bill, how does faulty wheel cylinder operation affect lining wear? Well, a sticky or jammed piston can hold a brake shoe out in the applied position. Of course, if the shoe does not return all the way, 
the lining will drag and wear rapidly. A piston which is stuck in the return position does not move its shoe outward, so you lose quite a bit of braking force at that wheel. This makes the other brakes work harder, so their lining wears faster. The good brakes may cause a pull to one side, especially when front brakes are affected. What makes a piston stick, Bill? Usually you'll find that corrosion makes a piston stick or jam. The corrosion results from water or splash which gets past damaged or deteriorated wheel cylinder boots. Wherever possible, check for water or evidence of corrosion under cylinder boots when you look for causes of uneven or excessive lining wear. Hydraulic system parts can also corrode from the inside as a result of water in the brake fluid. In or out of a system, the fluid must be free of water and absolutely clean or brake problems will develop. Strange as it may seem, brake fluid soaks up moisture like a blotter. In fact, fluid which is exposed to moist air only a short time will form vapor pockets at relatively low brake system temperatures and cause loss of pedal resistance. Keep all brake fluid containers closed airtight when they're not in use. And use a brake bleeder tank which isolates the air from the fluid. After all, a compressed air hose can pump in plenty of water. Thank you, Tech. Now let's switch to master cylinders for a minute. When you replace a master cylinder, check the part number to make sure you're installing the correct assembly. Some master cylinders look alike on the outside, but have different front and rear piston displacements. Any questions, Mike? Nope, I'm keeping up okay. And I'm ready to hear about incorrect linings. Well, the main fact to remember is that linings on our original equipment and Chrysler replacement shoes are tailored to each model's braking requirements. Different linings can change the original braking characteristics, can wear faster, and may cause heat spotting on drums. Another reason for using approved shoes is possible interference in the fit of shoes obtained from an outside source. You see, there's enough similarity in the appearance of our shoes and those used on competitive make cars that there could be a mix-up. Now, as for improper installation, we're mostly concerned with someone not following the procedure described in the service manuals. For example, installing reliant shoes without checking the lining radius in the drum. And as I mentioned earlier, be sure to replace heat-damaged or distorted springs with new ones. You install the primary shoe return spring before the secondary to prevent spring anchor pin damage and possible brake clunk. Before installing the rear drums, always loosen the parking brake adjustment enough to get plenty of in-play at one of the brake operating struts. This will prevent interference and possible brake drag when the rear brakes are adjusted. After the service and parking brakes are adjusted, test drive the car. You can forget anything you've heard about burning in new linings. This old practice only causes trouble. To protect new linings from abuse, the owner should be cautioned against unnecessary heavy brake usage immediately after a reline. And that brings us to the final cause of premature brake lining wear, pedal riding. Here instead of tools, you'll need the power of persuasion to correct the condition. But with a little appeal to their pocketbook sense, most customers agree to change their driving habits. Well, Mike, you now have a lot of answers to brake problems, and plenty to think about when you do your next brake job. We zeroed in on brake chatter and lining wear as the main line for this meeting, but we covered all the bases on the way. The points we covered in this film should help any master technician do brake work easier and better. Don't forget to read the reference book for this session, and always check your service manuals and bulletins for the last word. So long till the next meeting.